Hi friends, here in this video, I'll be explaining the derivation for Rankine's crippling load. So, let's start. The Rankine's formula or Rankine's crippling load will be applicable to all types of columns that is short columns, medium columns as well as long columns. And for that, there is a general relation which I'm going to write here, which is Now here is the general formula which says there is 1 upon or the reciprocal of P of x R which is the Rankine's crippling load is equal to 1 upon P of x E which is the Euler's crippling load plus 1 upon P of x C. P of x C is the compress compressive load also called as the crushing load. So here quickly I will mention that. So I have mentioned all these three loads that is Rankine's crippling load, Euler's crippling load as well as the crushing or compressive load. Now while de deriving Euler's crippling load, there was an assumption made that it is applicable for long columns. So it means if the column is short or medium in that case we cannot apply the Euler's formula. So we have to have an alternate formula which can be used for short and medium columns and that alternate formula would be the Rankine's formula. Now. P suffix C is the crushing or compressive load. It means when we have a column, here we are considering that if there is a column fixed at one end and free at the other end, subjected to an axial load. So here the load P is acting on this column. Now when we are considering Euler's crippling load, in that case, this column will buckle or it will bend under the action of the applied load. So this would be the bending pattern suppose for an example it is bending in this way. So this is called as the buckling of the column. But when we see this column it is also subjected to direct compression that is there will be compression or crushing, uh, crushing stress in the column and that becomes more prominent that is the crushing stress is more significant when the column length goes on decreasing. If we have an increasing length of the column or long column, long column will fail because of buckling whereas short column will fail because of direct compression. If this value that is 1 upon PE is very less or almost negligible that will be in case of short columns that is for short columns. The value of reciprocal that is 1 upon PE it is very very small so almost it is neglected it is equal to zero and why it is zero because in case of short columns pe value would be greater so the reciprocal is equal to zero similarly what will happen in that case when one upon p is kept zero so we have one upon pr is equal to one upon pc in that case pr is equal to pc so the Rankine's crippling load would be only the compressive load that is the Euler's load has been eliminated in case of short columns. So in short columns we can apply the Rankine's crippling load. Similarly for long columns the reciprocal 1 upon PC is almost equal to 0 the reason being this value would be almost zero is that PC value would be greater that is the compressive load for long columns would be greater so the reciprocal becomes zero so therefore what we are left with if one upon PC is very small that is zero one upon PR is equal to one upon PE in that case the Rankine's load is equal to the Euler's crippling load. So these were the condition for short columns and long columns but if it is medium column in that case what has to be done is we have to use this general formula and derive an alternate formula for the medium column. So what I can do here is therefore I can say that 
first of all since the compressive stress is equal to compressive load upon the cross sectional area of the column the cross sectional area can be any section it can be circular it can be hollow circular rectangular hollow rectangular i section t section any kind of section so now therefore from this i can say that pc is equal to sigma c into a sub x c then i'll give this as starting from the general equation which i had written this would be equation number 1 here p sub x c is equation number second next also i can say that the euler crippling load is given by the formula it is pi square e i minimum upon effective length square where capital e is the young's modulus for the column material i minimum is the moment minimum moment of inertia and effective length is the actual length of the column which takes part in bending now once we know pc and pe value i can just simplify the equation number 1 so that is from equation 1 since we have 1 upon pr is equal to 1 upon pe plus 1 upon pc so i'll simplify this and it will become 1 upon pr is equal to pc plus pe upon pe into pc then after simplifying this i'll make the reciprocal on both sides so we have pr is equal to pe into pc goes into the numerator whereas pc plus pe comes under the denominator then therefore dividing the numerator and denominator by euler's crippling load that is p sub x e so we have rankine's load would be equal to pc upon we have pc upon pe plus pe upon pe because we are dividing the numerator and denominator by pe then therefore we are left with here it is pc now we have pe upon pe when this cancels out cancels out we have 1 over here so i am writing 1 plus we have pc upon pe as it is now therefore putting the respective values that is from equation number second instead of pc we have sigma c into ac 1 plus instead of p of x c sigma c into ac and euler's crippling load that is over here i am giving it as equation 3 so pi square ei minimum upon effective length square so pi square next clearly we can see that from the numerator and denominator the cross sectional area gets cancelled out and here in this case it the cross sectional area it won't get cancelled out first of all because we are having plus sign over here so that will be so now after dividing the numerator and denominator by p of x e this equation would be the rankine's load on left hand side will remain as it is on the right hand side we have p of x e p of x c divided by p of x e then we have pc upon pe plus pe upon pe so i have divided the numerator and denominator by p of x e so what happens over here is the euler's load will get cancelled out then here also euler's load gets cancelled out so we have 1 now this equation will reduce into here we have 1 plus pc upon pe next instead of pc i can write it as sigma c into ac 1 plus again instead of pc it will be sigma c into ac and that is from equation number second and i have kept this equation as equation third in which we have euler's crippling load so putting the value of euler's that is pi square 
ei minimum upon effective length square now therefore this will be sigma c into ac will remain as it is 1 plus this effective length square it will go into this numerator because it is in the denominator of the denominator so therefore sigma c into ac into effective length square upon pi square e now instead of i minimum i minimum is given by the cross sectional area into k minimum square and that is because since the minimum moment of inertia is area into k minimum square k minimum is the minimum radius of gyration i minimum the minimum moment of inertia and a is nothing but the cross sectional area a suffix c so this is a suffix c next from this numerator and denominator a suffix c will get cancelled out then therefore the Rankine's crippling load will become 1 plus in the denominator now I am keeping sigma c upon pi square into e together effective length square upon k minimum square can be taken together so effective length upon k minimum square in the numerator we have sigma c into ac now therefore instead of sigma c upon pi square e here i can replace this with a constant because this term sigma c upon pi square e will not have a unit reason being sigma c is having a unit of newton per mm square young's modulus capital e also in terms of newton per mm square it gets cancelled out and pi doesn't have a unit so in short here we have a constant and that constant we can call it as either a we can keep the constant as a or we can keep it as alpha whichever value whichever we can uh, variable we can keep so finally the formula would be in this form that is the Rankine scripting load will be equal to sigma c into a suffix c 1 plus I am keeping it as small a upon effective length divided by k minimum the whole square so this I am keeping it as equation capital 1 and therefore so from this equation capital 1 we can calculate the Rankine's crippling load which can be used even in case for of short columns as well as for medium columns because Euler's crippling load was only applicable for long columns so we have derived a formula which will be applicable for all types of columns in order to find the effect of crushing load more prominently because in case of short columns they are subjected to compressive stresses whereas in case of long columns the column will fail due to buckling so that is why we have to derive an alternate formula which can be applicable for all types of columns and that is the Rankine formula now this derivation gets over and you all can also see the problems related to the Rankine scribbling load whose link would be provided in the description below so you all can just go there and refer how to use this Rankine's formula and here in this video we have seen how to derive the Rankine's crippling load. At the end, if you'll find my videos helpful, you'll can like, share, comment, and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends. Thanks for watching.